And so what happened tonight, Holly, can never happen again. Because I can't afford to feel that rage. Because that puts everything that I have left at risk. Peter Simon, Guiding Light. That puts my sanity, it puts my sobriety, it puts my feelings for my little girl. All of that is at risk and she's all I've got now. The medical review board is meeting tomorrow morning and I, I wanted to know what you decided. You went into the hospital files and pulled up Mindy's records for your own personal use. Yeah, I know. That was a terrible thing, too. You expect me to just turn my back? No, and I, I have no right to expect any kind of special treatment. Isn't that sort of what you're asking for? I, um, I just don't want to lose my job, that's all. I think it's much more likely the board would just recommend a suspension. But I can't stop working. That's the thing. I can't, I can't not work. I have to keep busy. You understand that, of all people. I mean, I'm a little embarrassed to admit the fact that um, if I don't have a place to go into every day, I think I will just be worrying constantly about Nick and Melinda. Ed, I'm asking you. I'm begging you to give me a second chance as a friend. And as a friend, I'm telling you that I think that you have some problems. You went into the hospital records. You trashed your apartment. If you love Nick, then you've got to tell him what's been happening. You've got to tell him what you've been doing, what you've been feeling. I mean... I already have told him. Believe me, it was not an easy thing to do. I, I was so afraid of how he was going to feel about me afterwards, but I, I read him totally wrong. He was understanding and he was reassuring. <clears throat> and I promised him that I would uh, I'd really work on my feelings. And I think everything is going to be okay. I think, it, I think things are going to be good. So, um, I mean, I know I shouldn't have come here. That was completely out of line. Ed, <clears throat> you are a very decent man. And uh, despite what happened between you and Lillian, I just want you to know that whatever you decide, I will understand. Eve? I won't make that report to the medical review board tomorrow. I don't want you to do anything that um, you think is wrong. You want to know what I think? Everybody deserves a second chance, right? <gasps> Thank you. Okay, hot chocolate coming up. I know I should be using the microwave, but I feel in a pioneer mood tonight. Where's Michelle? She decided to go to bed early. At this hour? Well, she's still not feeling well, huh? I think she's a little off. But she's fine. Honestly. Wait a minute. Look. I don't feel right about leaving here like this and I don't feel right about breaking a promise but I'm not even related someone should know no stop she got her first period she's not ready to talk about it I'm not going to talk about but it what are you going to say already yeah but she's fine really she is maureen told her what to expect and i filled in the blanks is she scared well she says she's not but you know it's a little alarming oh does she hurt like i say it's a little alarming and she told you not to tell me now that's not a punishment no little girl wants her father to know i don't know why that is it's one of the immutable truths what she did say is if you find out don't tell her. Oh, I do. You're the doctor. You know it. You don't have to do anything. Well, I, sh I mean, I should at least tell her I love her. Well, if you can find a way to subtly let her know that you know without bringing it up, then... How am I going to do this? How am I going to show her the way to being a woman without Maureen? You would be so relieved if you saw how mature she was. I mean, she knew what was happening. She knew what to do. I just wish she didn't have to go through this feeling so alone. Well, there's a certain amount of aloneness built into it. I mean, it's happening to her, not to anybody else. Mm. 
But girls are so different now. I mean, when I was her age, everybody whispered about it and called it the curse. By the time it was Blake's turn, she wouldn't shut up about it. She was so thrilled. I can figure this out, can't I? That's the spirit. I mean, you know what I think my problem is? He said, I, when everything is going well between us, I just feel like I'm sailing, you know? But then when something happens, when she gets angry at me, when she stalks out of the room, I, I just feel like an absolute failure. And I never used to get so hung up about that, you know? I figured I loved her so much. If I did something wrong, if I said something wrong, how wrong could it be? But now I agonize about everything. I mean, for instance, is she going to get angry at you when it dawns on her that I know. I doubt it. I think she half expects me to squeal. Because that, I couldn't, I, I could not handle that. You know, Ed, she gets mad at me all the time. Well, what do you do? I get annoyed if it annoys me, or I laugh it off if it doesn't. Well, that's very good. <laughs> why, why does she turn to you more than to anybody else? I don't know, because I'm an outsider? I truly don't know. I can't even give myself credit for making a big effort. Well, maybe that's why, do you think? Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go upstairs and I'm just going to say goodnight and see what she says. Follow your instincts. Could you stick around? I, I think I may need you to tell me how I did. <laughs> Don't overestimate my expertise. Remember Blake. Of course, I did have, have the help of her other lousy parent. Yep, could you anyway? No problem. Hi, cutie. Are you sleeping? I guess so. Late again, huh? It must seem to you like I'm always... always trying to catch up. I know sooner you get the perfect frame for your school picture, but suddenly you don't look like that anymore. I guess I relied a lot on your mom. Too much, probably. But the thing is, she was always there to tell me what to say and when to say it. Don't make a comment about Michelle's haircut. She's very sensitive. Don't tell Michelle she's not eating enough. She's trying to lose five pounds. Five pounds. How was I to know you always look perfect to me? But I'm not your mom. Never be your mommy. But I love you. I love you just as much as she did, and I could do better. I will do better. Because I don't want you to be all grown up and waving to me from the driveway on your way to the rest of your life and have it all still be a mystery to me. shaking. Why don't you let me take you home? No, I'm okay. Sure? Excuse me. The phone call, Mr. Spaulding, in the main dining room? Yeah, um, thanks, Jerry. I'm fine. I'm fine. Go ahead. Um, thank you for today. All right.
Hey, where did you come from? I've been here. I saw. Don't you wish you'd stayed home now? You want to sit down at a table? Yep. I'm sorry your party got spoiled. I really want a drink. Yeah, I know the feeling. You feel like you just want to numb yourself, right? I've got, I've got to do something first. I've got to deal with what brought me to this place. So, it... excuse me. Blake, honey, I need a little time alone with your mom, okay? Sure. I'm so sorry about tonight. It's okay. Fine, miss. It's not funny. No. Thank God for you. Lenny, don't thank God for me. Because next time I'm not going to be there for you. I was ashamed. I'd done something I knew wasn't very smart, and I just couldn't... Anyway, the, the next morning I told him it was just one of those things and it wasn't going to happen again, so I thought we'd settled it. You know, I'd handled the whole thing, but you know Roger, you know him better than anybody. So after all these years, you thought that you could handle Roger. Oh, please don't do this. Don't treat me like I'm some pariah who should have a red letter on my chest. Do you want me to feel any worse? Stop it. What? It's not... 20 years ago, so? and I can't tell you how to feel. I can't tell you what to do or what not to do. You are a grown woman, and you've got to make your own decisions. I know that, but you're my friend. You're even more than that. Or tell, are you going to pretend that you don't have other feelings for me about this? Oh. Of course, I have feelings for you. But this makes me want to drink. And if I started to drink now, I wouldn't be able to stop until I was dead. See, I'm an alcoholic. But you don't need a drink, you don't. Honey, I need a drink right now. I need a drink tonight, and what you've got to understand is all these years I have had to learn how to be, I've had to be so smart at knowing what buttons I can allow to be pushed and what can't be pushed. In the last couple of weeks, see, I've stopped being smart, and all of a sudden I'm back 15 or 20 years ago. What can I do? Tell me. It's done. It's already been done. It was done years ago, the first time you saw Roger. You're like a drug to him. You're in his system. You are in his blood, and he can't get you out. You're an obsession. And you have never learned how to push him away. I've tried. But you can't do it. And every time you do try, he just grabs on harder and drags you down. And then, see, I'm supposed to just stand there and watch, and that's what I can't do anymore. See, that's what I'm telling you. I can't stand around and watch you drown because for a long time, for such a long time, I was in love with you. And it scared me. Because it was like there was no bottom to my life. And it was like I was just free falling in space and I didn't care if I ever crashed to earth because it was such a wonderful feeling. 
things. Your life happened. I changed. I had to. No one could stay that way. I had to make my life count. Loving me didn't count. I couldn't go on loving you, Holly. You were too dangerous for me. But you made a good marriage, then. I made a marriage. At least I tried to, and then love gradually seemed to be something more like a safe harbor than a active volcano. But that's what loving you was like for me. And then there was Michelle, and for a short time, it's like I had everything. I had my safe harbor, and I got to look like a big shot in my little girl's eyes and see, I can, I can still try for that, but I have to work at that. I have to concentrate on that. But that's better. I saw the way she looked at you the other night. It's better. And so what happened tonight, Holly, can never happen again, because I can't afford to feel that rage. Because that puts everything that I have left at risk. That puts my sanity, it puts my sobriety, it puts my feelings for my little girl. All of that is at risk and she's all I've got now. And I'm not going to screw it up and I'm not saying it's your fault because it's not. It's nothing that you have done but you. Roger brings out the very worst in me. And you set him off and then he sets me off, and then I want to kill him, and I'm telling you this because I have to. It's for myself. And if I seem selfish, it's because I am, because I am a survivor, just like Roger, and you can't ever count on me again because you are too dangerous for me. You see, it doesn't matter to me why you slept with Roger again. For some reason, it just matters that you did.